Good morning and welcome to Southside Bible Church live stream service here from the house of Pastor Jayanne in Canberra. It is good for you to be able to join us for our weekly worship service together as God's people. If you've joined us because you heard about the minister who wears loud shirts, uh, then this is not your week. My name's John Steenhoff. I'm one of the partners here at Southside Bible Church, and I'd like to welcome you for joining us, whoever you are. If you're a regular member of SBC, welcome. If you are a visitor or family and friends, welcome. If you know and love Jesus, welcome. If you don't know Jesus and want to learn more, a special welcome to you. In these times of lockdown and physical distancing, it's easy to feel isolated and alone. So it's good to be welcomed to worship with some words from the Bible, from the book of Jude. To those who are called beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace and love be multiplied to you. How great is that? Even in lockdown, God gives us mercy, peace, and his love, and he gives it in multiples. So while we are distanced from each other, God is not distanced from us. And that's a wonderful thing, because we need his mercy each and every day. As we learned from Pastor Dom and his loud shirt last week in his sermon on Psalm 103, as far as east is from west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. We can be thankful that we have a forgiving God. We can also be thankful for the restrictions that are lifting in this time of pandemic and that we're increasingly able to have more fellowship. I hope many of you took seriously the, uh, the plea from Pastor Dom last week to take advantage of the increasing looseness of the restrictions to join together to worship today. I hope that there are people from Southside Bible Church who are opening their homes to others, people who are going to other people's homes so that we can worship together in groups. We can sing together. Uh, we can read the Bible together. It's not normal. It's not the way God has designed church to be done through a computer screen, but at least we can share increasing fellowship. So please make sure you take advantage of that. So as we come together, wherever you are and wherever you're watching this, let's uh, start with a prayer for the service. So quiet your hearts and let's pray. Father God, as we come together in worship, we pray that you may be present that even though we are communing through computer screen, we may feel a deep fellowship together, that we may feel your presence, and that we may commune with you through the singing of scripture, the reading of the Bible, the prayers that we have, and the Bible message that we receive from Pastor J.M. Bless our worship now, for Jesus' sake. Amen. You'll see a slide come up with today's worship order. And this morning's celebration will begin with some singing of songs and, and praise. We will have some time of confession and prayer. Then we'll have news time and a special debut performance of a song by Peter Kerma and Emmy, which is something to look forward to. We've got a video from our mission partners, Howard and Michelle, and hopefully the computer likes that better than the videos we've tried with Colin Buchanan. And then we'll have our Bible talk on Psalm 62 from our very own Pastor J.M. Lastly, we're going to finish off with some singing and then we'll go into our cafe time together. So as we start together, let's sing our first song. And we will sing Jesus Shall Reign, sung by the lovely Daniela. Please, wherever you are, stand up and join and sing with us. i 
Thank you for that, Daniela. Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. It is good that Jesus is king. And what happens when Jesus is king? Well, as his children, we look forward to eternal life with God. But it's not just pie in the sky when we die. There are great benefits to being a child of God in this life. So I want to bring us to the Westminster Shorter Catechism, which tells us about the benefits of knowing Christ in this life. It's in a question and answer format, and a slide will come up on your screen that says, what are the benefits in this life of being children of God? And there are five benefits and those benefits are we have the assurance of God's love we have peace of conscience we have joy in the Holy Spirit we have an increase in grace and we have the promise of perseverance in our faith what a wonderful blessing it is to know Christ in this life And so, in response to reflecting on those blessings, let's pray to our God. You will see a slide come up on your screen. You can join us in this prayer, and I will finish off after we pray together. O Lord God, teach us to know that grace comes before comes alongside and follows our salvation, that it sustains our redeemed souls and that not one link of the chain of grace can ever be broken. From Calvary's cross, wave upon wave of grace reaches us, deals with our sin, washes us clean, renews our heart, strengthens our will, draws out our affection and kindles a flame in our souls. How great are our privileges in Christ Jesus. In him we draw near. Without him we dare not lift up our guilty eyes, but in him we gaze upon Father as our God and friend. Without Jesus we hide our lips in trembling shame. But with him we are able to worship in, tr- in petition and in praise. Without Jesus, all is wrath and consuming fire. But with Jesus is all love and the repose of our soul. Praise be to you, God, and to Jesus for your grace and for the unspeakable gift of salvation. Amen. In response to that prayer, we are going to sing, Hear Our Prayer. So please stand up and join with John and Hannah as we sing, Hear Our Prayer. Let's sing together, uh, Hear Our Prayer.
Thanks, John and Hannah. We uh, now come to the news time for Southside Bible Church, and there's three things I want to tell you about today, remind you about. The first is to remind you about the prayer meeting that happens each and every Sunday prior to the worship service, to our celebration at 930 There is a prayer time on Zoom that's been arranged by Pastor Adam. It gives us the chance to pray for the worship, for the celebration that is to happen for 15 minutes. And you're encouraged to join that. The link for that will be in the e-news. Second thing to talk about in news time is youth group. Youth group is on every Friday night. And it would be good to see all of our youth connecting on Friday night joining in with each other and with the program that's being put together on Zoom. Do you want the youth of our church to finish school with a strong, active, personal faith in Jesus? Well, that's the kind of space that youth group provides. And with the relaxation of the lockdown rules, we'd encourage people to get together in homes, bring our youth together so that they can join in and have fellowship with each other. There should be a slide coming up for the third announcement at news time, and that is, of course, the songs of praise that will be held this evening over YouTube from the house of John and Hannah, who have wonderfully opened their home, and we will be broadcasting some songs of praise for us all to sing with them from 6.45 p.m. this evening. There will even be a devotional message from our pastor, Pastor Dom. So make sure you tune in, make sure you bring your singing voice. There will be plenty of special guests. It's going to be bigger than any of the coronavirus concerts that have been held yet. So I hope you enjoy. Speaking of concerts, we have a video to share with you. You've probably seen celebrities and musicians doing special musical numbers during lockdown and sharing them. Well, we have our own Peter Kerma and Emmy, who have been very busy during this lockdown time. Who can forget Kerm's great musical number, Praise Him, that we heard him put together at the beginning of our um, journey through the Psalms. Indeed, in one service, it was repeated many, many times, so that I'm sure it's like an earworm in your head. Well, now he is going to share with us another original composition, Please listen and reflect on the words which should appear at the bottom of the song. It's not for you to sing along, so don't feel the need to do that, but listen and reflect. And straight after that, we will move into a video from our mission partners, Howard and Michelle. So here is Strong and Loving by Kerm and Emmy.
Hi everyone, I'm Howard. I'm Michelle. And together as a family, we serve as CMS missionaries in the Philippines. And we would love for you to get on board and give financially to the CMS Lasting Hope Appeal to support us and to support others around the world, other CMS missionaries, as we share a lasting hope with people around the world. We want to introduce you now to Danielle and Hanelin, a couple whom we've had the privilege of sharing our lives with and um, discipling them in ministry. Here's their story. No una, uh, no una sa church pa kami, na walang uh, nagtuturo sa amin na mag-aral ng Bible. Nakikinig lang kami sa nagtuturo sa preacher, pero kaya noong nakilala namin si Kuyahawi at tinuruan kami ng Swedish method ng study, uh, doon ko natutunan yung ano ang context sa Bible dahil sa light bulb, sa ano ang nag-stand out. So, napakasaya ko dahil, wow, ganito pala ang Bible, ganito pala ang sinasabi ng Biblia. So, napakasaya kasi na tutunan kong mag-aral ng, ng mabuti sa Bible. At nakita ko yung sinasabi ng Biblia at kinumpare ko sa sinasabi ng tao na mas mahalagang mas makinig at makita at maitindihan yung tunay na mensahe ng Bible doon sa Swedish method na. Kami naman ay nagbuo kami ng isang group, isang ladies uh, Bible study group. At uh, syempre pinangunahin kami ni Ate Minis Chi. Tinuro niya, nila sa amin kung paano mag-study about sa Bible na gamit ang Swedish uh, method. So napakalaking bagay sa amin yun kasi mas naiintindihan namin kung paano um, i-analyze yung mensahe ng Panginoon sa Biblia. Kung paano basahin ito ng tama at kung paano intindihin. Uh, yung mga context na nasa Bible. So, malaking bagay para sa amin na uh, na-share, na-share nila sa amin yun. At hanggang ngayon ay nagpapatuloy po yung uh, Readies Bible Study Group namin. At uh, masaya kami dahil uh, may mga, may merong improvement at uh, fellowship na nangyayari sa amin sa mga ladies. One of the wonderful privileges that we have as a church of God is to come together in prayer communally as a church family. That's a little harder to do at this distance through the internet. I've been told that I have to look directly into the camera for Michael Norfolk. But um, we still can have that closeness, uh, even though we are separate uh, and in different places. And that closeness comes through communal prayer. So if you take now time to calm whatever's going on around you, to close your eyes, fold your hands, we're going to join together in a church family prayer. We're going to also remember our missionaries, uh, Howard and Michelle, and others who are serving out on the field in our prayer. So please join me in prayer. Our Father in heaven, We praise you because you are strong and loving. You are the rock and our souls wait in silence for you. We thank you that you are our father and that you invite us to come into your presence with joy. So even in these strange times, help us to be filled, Lord, with joy, especially today on Sunday, the day set aside for worship and for communion together, where we can be refreshed and nourished spiritually. We thank you that today we can draw near to you, and we pray that you will draw near to us, even as we are physically separated. Lord, we are in your house, even as we worship in our own homes. So we ask that you pour us out on us your spirit of grace, awaken in us a grateful and cheerful and worshipful emotion. And as we open your word, may it enlighten us. May it awaken and prod us to obedience to you. May it remind us of the joy that is ours through the grace of Christ. May it bring comfort and may it bring us rest 
and may it make us ready to serve you as your people. We thank you that we could hear about Howard and Michelle, our CMS missionaries. We pray that you will continue to be with them during furlough as they are absent from the Philippines. We thank you for their work, discipling people to read your word and to be able to experience the gospel themselves in their Bible studies. We thank you that the gospel is going out. And please spur us on to be generous and faithful in the support that we give to their work. We pray for all of the other mission partners that we support at Southside Bible Church, both those who are in Australia and those who are out on the mission field. We pray that you will give them strength, that you will give them courage to speak your word faithfully and to spread your gospel. And we pray, Lord, that as they sow the seed, you will make hearts open, ready and willing to receive the gospel so that a great harvest may be brought in. We pray for our church ministries in this time. Lord, we pray for the youth group. We pray for Solid Rock, BKs and and Bible Tots, programs that have stopped, uh, but or which have been reduced during this time of pandemic. We pray for uh, those who are leading and putting together material. And we also pray that you'll raise up a crop of new leaders as well. We pray for your blessing on our youth, Lord. Uh, that they may be able to continue to learn and grow in you, to know you as God and Jesus as Savior. We pray, Lord, that we may be fruitful during this time of lockdown in evangelism and inviting friends to church and introducing people to the gospel. We pray for the gospel work that is being done with people who do not know you. We pray for people who may be watching this morning, Lord, who do not know you, and we pray that you may reveal yourself to them. And to all of us, we pray, Lord, that you will be with those who are anxious during this lockdown period, those who are sick, those who are exhausted, those whose work has taken uh, a different turn and those who who are out of work. We pray, Lord, that you will bring comfort and a peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we pray, especially during this time for our federal and state governments as they navigate the difficulty of this coronavirus pandemic. We pray that you will give them wisdom as they start to loosen off the lockdown. We pray especially that they may recognize the core importance of churches, uh, the real work that is being done through churches, and the necessity of churches being able to open again as soon as is safe and as soon as is possible. And we pray also that you will give them a wisdom as they continue to deal uh, with the pandemic and that you will give them particularly uh, discernment, Lord, so that they may be able to make decisions which will save lives, but also which will uh, recognize the freedoms uh, that are necessary for our society to flourish. Lord, we see riots, violence and unrest in the U.S. We see the terrible scenes of a man unnecessarily killed by police brutality. We pray, Lord, for your hand on that situation. We pray that you will be with those who are responding to the violence that has erupted in many U.S. cities. We pray that you will give wisdom to the U.S. government as it deals with it. And we know, Lord, that the only true reconciliation that can come in this situation is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we see this brokenness and darkness, and we know that sin is something that cuts across all human hearts, no matter what color we are, no matter what race we are, no matter what culture we are from, no matter what strata of society we are from. And so we pray, Lord, that you will bring to mind for people uh, the fact that they need a saviour, that this brokenness is caused by sin and that your gospel may go out even in these difficult times. We pray also for our students, who some of whom are here and some of whom are still in China and other places in Asia. We pray that you will continue to preserve and bless them 
and uh, that, Lord, you will continue to uphold them in their faith in you. We pray for one of our fellow churches in the Fellowship of Independent Evangelical Churches, the North Coast Church in Perth. We pray that you will be with their pastor, Dwayne Oliver, and pastor Matt Malcolm, as they continue to preach your gospel and spread the word in Perth, and be especially with their ministry to students at Edith Cowan University. We pray also, Lord, for our brothers and sisters at Malongolo Bible Church during this time, they're worshipping right now. We thank you that we can be uh, united with them in many of our endeavours. We pray that you will continue to be with them as they spread the word in Malongolo, as they preach faithfully. We pray for all of our leadership team as they navigate this coronavirus lockdown. And we pray that you will give us the opportunity to meet together in person as soon as is possible. We badly miss the fellowship uh, of the church and being able to see familiar faces and to join together in song and to hear your word preached face to face. And we pray, Lord, that that moment may come quickly where we can join together. In the meantime, Lord, we pray that you will bless our worship uh, at this time and be with us as we open your word, as we hear what it says to us, and as Pastor J.M. preaches. We pray all this confident in the promises that you have made, that you love us, that you watch over us, and that all things will work out for our good. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's now sing a song together again. We're going to sing Rock of Ages, and it's going to be brought to us by John and Hannah. Let's sing together Rock of Ages.
Awesome, church. Uh, Thanks, John, for leading us this morning. It's great to join together and actually singing along with you uh, from our living room today. We've got a few people gathered here this morning, so it's fantastic to join together in worship and singing in our celebration. My name is Jan. I'm one of the pastors, leaders here at Southside Bible Church. It's my privilege to take us through Psalm 62 this morning. Uh, Before we read the psalm, I thought I should Uh, give you a bit of an introduction into uh, this psalm, but uh, as I do that, I want you to think about this. How do you find rest in the restless world that we are living in? How do you find rest? Uh, Rest comes in many forms. One of it is physical rest through sleep. Uh, In our house, we, uh, my wife and I, we've been sleeping on a mattress that's about 18 or 19 years old. We don't know how old it is. We got it, had it given to us, but uh, a while back, I was looking at getting into a mattress, but, but then I stopped. Because as you look into the mattress and how they mark things up, I looked at a study that came out of Choice magazine uh, a few years ago as I was looking into mattresses. And apparently mattresses cost just about 1000 or $2,000 to make if you're making them in Australia. But they're marked up 300%. And they sell for $10,000 in the shop. And mattress makers know the fact that we all buy mattresses in Australia. Thousands of mattresses are sold every year in Australia knowing that there's such a huge market. You know know what, you know, I'll wait till the prices to come down and maybe get another mattress. But are are we any more rested as a society, as a country, just because we've got all these goodies to help us to sleep? Mattress being one example. There's many other examples you can go to. See, friends, people who uh, study this, basically say that restlessness happens when our circumstances don't match our expectations and therefore we get restless. And we are all experiencing this right now during this lockdown period. Uh, We had expectations maybe uh, of grand weddings. We had expectations of church gatherings or international travel. Right now I'm looking forward to the day and I can actually go to the state, the independent state of Queensland for a holiday, but it's not going to happen. Your expectations of career, schooling, and in fact, meeting uh, chances of meeting a special someone in a beautiful church in Namaji or in a Christian conference, it's dashed. They're all out of whack. All our expectations are out of whack during this season of pandemic. And so as a society and as people, you are restless and I am restless. And the question is, what can we do about it? What can we do? You know, you've come to church. uh, John has prayed. He's led church. He's reminded us of the rest that we find in God. And you might think the answer is to find our rest in God. It's a Sunday school answer. But it's the right answer. But how? How do you find rest in your restlessness? doesn't mean that if you trust God, that God is going to change your circumstances to match your expectations. Is that what it means? You might be someone who's uh, new to the Christian faith. You might be a young person in our youth group who's started following Jesus. Or you might be uh, actually someone looking into this whole Christian thing, working out if this is the right thing for you. You might expect, you might have an expectation that now that I am with God, now that I've come to church, now that I've gone to fellowship group, I've gone to Bible study, God should look after me. God should change my circumstances to match my expectations. But what if I tell you, that God, knowing God may change your circumstances, but it will always change your expectations. Knowing God, and therefore doing that, knowing God will help you find rest in your restlessness. And that's the point of this psalm, uh, this sermon, Psalm 62, that knowing God will help you find rest in your restlessness. As we heard from our Filipino brother, when you come to the scriptures, context is very important. Uh, this psalm is written by uh, King David. One of the 75 psalms attributed to the King David, uh, to to this king. Uh, He was restless in his life at this point in time. uh, Because his expectations of being God's chosen king is all smashed. Because his enemies were after him. And you'll find this in the psalm. It's also a uh, song of worship to be sung in the temple uh, by a musician by the name of Jeduthun is one of the three musicians we find in the book of 1 and 2 Chronicles. It's a very good Indian-sounding Jewish baby name. Duncan and Millie, if you want a name, there's one for you. This psalm tells us how to find rest in our restlessness. 
So I'm going to hand over to Duncan, who's going to read, from, read for us. But before he does that, uh, if you don't have the Bible with you, you can go to BibleGateway.com or Bible.com and search for Psalm 62 from the New International Version as uh, Duncan comes to read for us. Good morning, church. Welcome. I'm going to be reading from Psalm 62, so feel free to open up to it. Truly my soul found, finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, I shall not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion, but put vain hope, or, or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. This is the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, a few crows in the background. Maybe Duncan doesn't like the name Jeriton, so he's left that out in his reading. But yeah, there it is. Um, friends, if you, are, if you are a parent, uh, now is the time you can have your children uh, if you print, hopefully you printed out uh, the resources for Bible Kids from our website. Uh, there was also an outline sent uh, to everyone in church yesterday. Uh, but the sermon is fairly straightforward. Even if you don't have an outline, you should be able to follow this uh, pretty easily. You can find rest in your restlessness if we learn four things from this psalm. Four things. Number one, trust in God alone. Trust in God alone comes up in verse 1, verse 2, verse 5, and verse 6 and 7. But look at verse 1 first. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly is my rock, my salvation, my fortress. I will never be shaken. And you find the same chorus come up in verses 5 and 6. I want to say two things about this. Uh, firstly, there's a strange Hebrew word at the start of that's repeated five times. At the start of verse 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. And that word is difficult to translate. I don't want to say it in case I get it wrong. It's difficult to translate in the English. And that's why your English translations will use different words like only, or alone, or truly, or yes, depending on the version that you're reading. All those different words communicate this fact that David puts his exclusive trust in God alone. I want you to think about that for a second. David is a king. And if you read about his life history in 1 and 2 Samuel, you'll find that he's always surrounded by the best advisors in Israel. He's always surrounded by mighty warriors. He's always surrounded by good prophets and counselors around him. He could buy the best advisors Israeli dollar can buy. But who does he ultimately trust? In God alone. Friends, there's a lesson in that for us. All the books and the strategies about different ways of living and finding rest and peace are all good. But our exclusive trust must be in God alone. And the second thing I wanted to point out is the meaning of the word rest in uh, verse 1. The word for rest in verse 1 is simply silence. And that is why... For example, if you read an English Standard Version, it puts it as, My soul waits in silence. There is, that is soul quietness, 
hard quietness. Let's think about that for a second. And you can talk about this in your fellowship groups later on as you meet for cafe time. Who do you trust when you're restless? Or what do we trust when we are restless? What about the silence? When we are restless, we get fidgety, we make noise, you know, we complain. We used to write letters to the editor. Nowadays, we complain on the internet. We get noisy to God. We find this in the Psalms. But are we silent? Can we wait in silence? See, silence is essential for the spiritual life. Uh, you know what Jesus did when he was restless in his ministry, right? In Luke chapter 5, he withdrew to a quiet place. And why? Because if you want to find rest, it doesn't matter if you're an extrovert like me or an introvert, we all need solitude. It's not me time, but it's me time with God. It's carving out a space in your life where you can sit with God in silence. A place where you and I can just zip it and find our soul quietness in God. Dallas Willard, a, um, a theologian, puts it like this. He says, silence is powerful and essential. Only silence allows us to have life-transforming concentration on, upon God. The rest of the Christian disciplines becomes very difficult to maintain without silence. What he's saying is that all the books, all the study, all the experts, all the talking, writing, learning, tithing, coming to church, serving, they all count for not a lot unless you cultivate the habit of soul silence. You want to have light transforming knowledge of God? We all need to learn to zip it and sit with the Lord in silence. Let me explain it like this. Given that this broadcast is happening from our place, uh, so I want to give you a story. I'm not a gardener, okay? We got beautiful flowers here today. Thank you, Amy. I'm not much of a gardener. I'm what they call a garden killer, okay? Sometimes, you know, something gets through and something survives. Uh, in our old place down the road, uh, we used to have a sunflower. And I didn't notice at the time, but sunflowers, if you know the flower, it actually rises in the east, uh, uh, sorry, it blooms in the, uh, and, it, and it tracks the sun as the sun goes from the east to the west. It's amazing. It was at the front of our house and we were, and I was actually building this carport once. And um, we were digging, we were you know, drilling and making a lot of noise and concreting and grinding and all the rest to put this carport together. And you know what? This sunflower, the whole street could hear us working, but the sunflower, it just kept following the sun quietly. Man, I just wish I could be that sunflower and there's all that noise around me in my life, that restlessness. I just wish I can just follow the S-O-N in quietness. Friends, only a calm lake, if you think about it, it's only a calm lake that reflects the glories of the sky, the glories of the heavens. If you keep throwing pebbles at it, you lose the reflection. So, beloved, carve out a space in your life for silence, finding your rest. Just for total disclosure, about my sunflower story, bring it to a close. I didn't realize that at the time the, the, uh, the carport actually put a shade on the sunflower. So, you guess what happened to that? It died. Surely, friends, if there's ever a generation that needs to hear this preaching, be still and let God speak. It's us. It's this generation. We are surrounded by noise, and I'm your guilty pastor, and our pastors are restless creatures. We're always working. We're always thinking. We're always writing, emailing. We are crafting something. Every day in my life, I need to carve out a space to sit and zip it in silence. And young people, if you're from your youth group, you need to learn this. My kids are here. The Johnson kids are here. Learn this early and learn this well. Get off the Snapchat or social media or gaming or Minecraft or whatever it is and sit in silence. You learn this early and learn this well. So the question is, do you exclusively trust in God alone? In the middle of all the noise and the restlessness in your life. Do you, can you sit in quietness, in silence? Only you can answer that. Remember I said knowing God may change your circumstances. May change your circumstances, but it will always change your expectations. Which is what we find in verses 3 and 4. Look at verses 3 and 4. How long will you assault me? Surely they intend to topple me with their mouths they bless, but with their hearts they curse. What's he doing? 
He's trusting God. He's able to sit with God in silence. But yet, he's in touch with reality of his problems. Years ago, uh, I, I mean, I enjoy watching cricket. Uh, and the thing about cricket is, right, if you expect to play cricket, if, you're a, if you want to be a batsman, you expect to get hit. And that's why the modern batsman has all the padding and the gear and the tie pads and the bodyguards and things like that. But back when I was growing up in the 80s, the batsmen, Indian batsmen didn't have all this gear. They just had a pad and they had a helmet and they faced the West Indies, you know, seven foot monsters coming, you know, howling, fast bowling at you. But there was one opener on the Indian cricket team by the name of Srikanth. Amazing batsman. He, he had a batting style which was open, open body. So he used to get hit a lot on his body. But he always had a smile on his face. You could just tell that he loved, he enjoyed the joy of batting. <laughs> It'd get hit, but you wouldn't tell it from his face. He's always laughing. His, his spirit just comes out. See, friends, there was a documentary done on, on, on him, a while, uh, and, and they took a photo of him without his shirt, and it was full of red bruises from, from the balls he was getting hit at. But you couldn't tell looking at him, looking at him bad. You know, you don't, you don't give up the joy of sport just because you get a few hits. We shouldn't give up the joy of being a Christian just because we get a few hits. If you follow God, expect joy, but also expect suffering. Look at verse 3. David is the leaning wall. He's the tottering fence. Another way you can translate it is, is a wall that's bent over, a fence that is thrown down from its exalted position. Here's the thing, he's the king, he's the prime minister, he's the, he's the president of the nation, but yet he is at risk of losing it all, like a little fence, just blown away by his enemies. Friends, life is suffering. We've heard this again and again in this series. Life is suffering. Was God absent in David's life? No, he wasn't. He was just accepting reality as life as it is. And we need to get real. Life is suffering. If you're looking into Christianity, as I said, God may deliver you from your suffering, but he always delivers us through suffering. His power is perfected in our weakness. We'll find true rest in heaven, but we're not there yet. Jesus said, in this life, you will have trouble. In this world, you will have trouble. Jesus said in John 15, the Father prunes every branch that bears much fruit. I want you to take heart that pressure is all the difference between a piece of diamond and a piece of coal. That's what this series has taught us, that life is suffering. Life is restlessness. Now, this is not to... Get you con this is not to confuse you with Zen Buddhism or to make you more stoic in life, but to actually get us in touch with reality as life as it is. Because Psalm 62 goes on to tell us to get rid of the wrong places of rest. To get rid of the wrong places of resting. Look at verse 5 and 6 and 7, where David repeats his confession. Yes, my soul, find rest in God, my rock, my refuge, my salvation. He's telling himself, but you know what he does? He does this beautiful thing in verse 8. He turns to the community because he's the king, he's the leader. He turns to the community, the congregation of God's people, and he says, guys, let's do this together. Let's do this together. Let's look at that. Verse 8. Pour out your hearts to God, people, for he is our refuge. It's a lovely image, pour out. It literally means there's nothing left to pour out anywhere else. Your heart, your heart, let's pour out your hearts. It's empty. You can't pour it out in your strategies. You can't pour it out in anything else. Let's do it with God. And church, I want to ask you, are you restless? We've just prayed. How are we going to meet? Where are we going to meet? But I want you to know we should learn to pour out our collective restlessness to God as we've started doing in prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Let's continue to do that. Pour out our hearts to God in prayer. So we can't look into the world for rest. We can't rest in the wrong places. We need to get rid of the wrong places of rest, like money, stuff, people. All of it is here today and gone tomorrow. Have a look at verse 9. Surely the low born are but a breath, but the high born are but a lie. And he goes on to say, basically, guys, if you weigh up all the powerful people on earth, 
and all the powerless people on earth, you weigh up the prime ministers, you weigh up the homeless people in Garima Place, and you combine all of them and you weigh them up, and you guess what? They're a bread. And how much is a bread? <sighs> That's how much they weigh. There's a great line in John chapter 2, verse 24, when Jesus was getting very popular. Lots of people were flocking to Jesus, but it says Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. And what are all people? Sinners, less than a breath, here today, gone tomorrow. Beloved, get rid of the wrong resting places in your life. Look at verse 10. What does man do? What does the world tell us to do? To put our trust in money and possessions. But look at what he says. Even if, even if riches increase, and that includes hard work, do not set your heart upon them. We think of heart as the uh, center of our emotions, but in this context, it's your whole being, it's your intellect, it's your life, it's your whole soul. Do not put your heart on your riches. Money isn't going to save you from debt. Money is not the answer to our restlessness. Eventually, we'll lose it all. So get rid of the wrong places of rest. So SPC, who do you trust? We have nothing to fear from man, and we have nothing to hope from man or as ways of finding rest. So get rid of the wrong places of rest. You can talk about this in your fellowship groups later on. Do we trust in the government <laughs> in the place of God? Government is great, but do we trust in the government in the place of God? Do we trust in our money in the place of God? Do we trust in powerful people who can help us in the place of God? Do we trust in the judicial system, which is stronger because of men like John Steinoff? Do we trust it in the place of God? Do we trust in our strategies in the place of God. You, you trust, you can fill in the blank in the place of God. See, I'm not, uh, I want to be clear that if God has given you uh, faithful, good friends and a great church that meets in Namaji, that's streaming from Fisher and lots of money and a loving wife or a loving husband, loving friends, thank God for it. It is a gift. We should enjoy it. Uh, do not put your deepest hope in man, or woman, or family, or strategies, or systems. Reserve that spot for God alone. Trust Him who is eternal and unchanging. So how do you find rest in your restlessness? Well, friends, trust in God alone. Get real. Life is suffering. And get rid of the wrong places of rest. But the psalm also ends with telling us to actually get ready. Get ready for real rest. Look at verses 11 to 12. That, remember the Imi, uh, Kerm and Imi's chorus. It's, it comes from here. One thing God has spoken. Two things I've heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you there's unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. The style of composition there, it's a Hebrew wisdom way of saying, it comes up in Proverbs 30, Amos chapter 1. It's a Hebrew wisdom way of saying that, listen guys, ultimately, there's two things I've learned about God. The God is powerful and loving, and, he will, and His justice is coming. And because you know these two truths about God, you can actually find rest in your silence. You can actually find rest in our restlessness. I want you to take you to the first one. God is both loving and He's powerful. Years ago, when I was young, uh, before I met my wife, I had a philosophy of live fast and die young. But after I got engaged, I actually wanted to live, low, live slow and live longer. So I used to have a very fast motorcycle. And I used to love going around corners. And Matthew's here. He rides a motorcycle. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> As he go around corners, right? I always wanted to have that perfect knee-down corner. I had a very fast motorcycle, so you could do this. A knee-down corner around as you go around. See, what needs to happen is all the laws of physics, the entry speed, the temperature of your tires, uh, the camber on the road, your speed, and everything has to combine together to give you that perfect, perfect spark on your, on your undercarriage or your footbag as you are 
taking that corner. It's beautiful. Next time you have a race or if you're watching a race on TV, just have a watch how, how cool it looks. I always wanted to do that. I could never do that. <laughs> I had the will, but never had the skill. God is not like me, see? He has the will, and He also has the skill. He has power. He can do whatever He wants. That's what David says. But His power is manifested in love to you, to me personally. His power is manifested in His unfailing, covenantal love to His people. That's the first thing. And it's justice. Second, God will just rightly. For David and his people, their hope that God who loves them will repay justice, including to the enemies who persecute God's people. Friends, there is a day coming that God will reward everyone, including the enemies of God, for what they have done to his people. Isn't that the same for us? When we get persecuted, when people do things, we can't actually get back to them. Doesn't it, knowing this, that God is powerful and loving and He will just right, and he'll judge rightly, change your expectations when you are restless, when we suffer. So now we can actually wait in silence, trust and patience. Beloved, there is a real rest coming that God will bring. That's where the psalm ends. But I also wanted to say this about verse 12. Verse 12 is like a red flag, okay? First time we went to the outback, we were driving on these roads, long dusty roads, and every once in a while you come across this red flag right in the middle of the road. It's what they call a bulldust hole, okay? If you, if you hit it carelessly, you'll break your axle or you, you know, topple over or whatever. So there's a bulldust hole. It's just a soft, big hole for rain and whatever reasons. When you come to verse 12, it's like a bulldust hole for evangelical types because it sounds like it's salvation by works, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not salvation by works, but it's the reward in heaven on the basis of our faithfulness. Jesus quoted this verse 12, Psalm 62, verse 12, word for word in Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Matthew 16, verse 27. The Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels. And what's He going to do? And then... He will reward each person according to what they have done. Same verse, 62.12. It's the same principle you found in the parable of the talents, where the guy who gets the five bags of gold makes it into ten, he gets the reward. The guy who gets two bags of gold and he gets it into four, he gets the reward. The guy who gets the bag of gold and he buries it, he gets the sack. It's the same thing that Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. Our, our works will be tested by fire, but we will be saved. Each one will be record, rewarded according to their own labor. We're going through midweek devotions in the book of Ephesians, for example. Good works is a big deal in Ephesians. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8 says, The Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do. See, friends, as Christians, we are saved by grace. And I would argue that we are also sanctified by grace. But our reward in heaven is on the basis of our faithfulness. You can argue that also comes from grace, but that is how Scripture teaches us. For many of you watching, this, uh, watching today, this psalm is not a bulldozer stall to break your axle or to question your salvation. This is for your encouragement. Jesus has won our salvation, full stop. As we prayed at the start, wave upon wave of grace. We've received the unfailing love of God when you put your trust in Jesus. There is nothing you need to do except live in obedience to the grace that you've already received. And how do you do it? By doing what the psalm says. To trust in God alone. <laughs> to reset our expectations about life now. To stop looking for rest in the wrong places. And to get ready for real rest that's about to come. That's the encouragement for the Christian, if you're watching it this morning. This is our encouragement. Those four points that I made. But some of you watching this morning, you may not be at the stage in your life where you're ready to give your life to Jesus. You might be looking in. If that's you, there's two things about the psalm that should bother you, that should annoy you. That should, I would even say that it shouldn't let you go to sleep, these two things. You know what they are? It's right at the start of the psalm in verse 1. 
and right at the end in verse 12. All right, at the start, you know, it says, trust in God alone. You know you're not trusting in God alone. You know it. <laughs> you might be trusting in prescription drugs. Your health, your money, your self-confidence, your pride of life, your family, your race, your culture, your relationships, your intellect, your career options, your independence, or even your religion. See, friends, whatever you're resting on, it ain't going to work. In fact, you know it's not working. It should annoy you. And the second that should bother you is verse 12. A day will come you will have to give an account, as Pastor Dom brilliantly illustrated last Sunday, about the books being opened up when you stand before God. You can either stand on your own or you can stand on the merits of Jesus Christ. If you think you can stand on your own, on your own, you've got no idea about the state of your soul as a sinner and the holiness of God. Just think for yourself. Apply, let's apply common logic here, okay? Let's take an analogy, for example. If you look at life, you look at life in the world, we all know that power without love is brutality. It's tyranny. That's what you get. Power without love, you get a Hitler. But love without power, that's just, you know, useless. You know, you can do whatever you want. But power with love is gracious. We know this. Love with power is glorious when we see it. You know, this is true from life, from observing the world around us. But why don't you believe that this is true about the God who is the author of life? Think for yourself. There is a place where the power and the love and the justice of God intersected. On a hill outside Jerusalem, on the cross. See, friends, that's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke, for it is easy, and my burden is light. That's the verse that changed my life. Do you know why Jesus said that? He trusted God alone. He got real with life, and he suffered a restless life, and he will come back to Repay everyone according to the good they've done. You know, the reason why he says my yoke is easy is because his yoke, the demand that Jesus puts on your life right now, is lighter than the burden of sin and restlessness that you're carrying on you right now. But Jesus wants you to come and find rest. Find rest in the place where God's power and love and his justice intersected on the cross. And you can use all kinds of intellectual arguments to, for your unbelief. But as Pastor Dom said last Sunday, the question will come up. What did you do about the cross? What did you do about the empty tomb? What did you do about the witness of the scriptures? What did you do about the witness of the church? What was your reaction on the 31st of May 2020 when you knew that there will be a day when I will repay everything according to what you've done. See, friends, you can't stand on your merits on that day. <laughs> and the good news is that you don't have to stand on your merits on that day. You can stand on the merits of Jesus Christ. If you say you're ready to come, then come. If your friends have invited you, talk to your friends. Don't, don't be ashamed of praying with them. Give your heart to Jesus. Come and find your rest, for truly His burden is light. And you will find rest for your souls. So friends, where do you find rest in your restless world? Well, all kinds of things are useful. If you find a mattress on sale, please let me know. I'm interested still. But if you want to find real rest in your restlessness, trust in God alone. Get real with life. But get rid of the wrong places of resting. And there is a day coming. Get ready. For that rest, that real rest that God will bring about. Let me pray as we finish. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Father, for your word. Father, we thank you for the way you've uh, created us. You've given us your word. Father, we confess uh, our faith is weak sometimes. We look for rest in all the wrong places. When we know we need to sit quietly with you 
and trust you in our restlessness. So, Father, we pray that you will forgive us, overlook our sins, but you will reform us through your most Holy Spirit so that we can actually, people, look forward to the rest that's coming and find our rest in our restlessness. And, Lord God, I pray for those of us who are yet to have this rest. Father, we pray that you will do your mighty Holy Spirit work in them, that they would come to him who is able to give them rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks. We're going to sing. Please stand up and sing our final song. Let's sing in Christ alone. Thank you for tuning in to church with us here at Southside Bible Church. We hope you were blessed by that celebration. And a big thanks to Pastor Jayan for taking us through the wonderful truths of Psalm 62. We trust you have been encouraged by God's word and that in it and in God you will find rest. It's now Zoom Cafe time in your fellowship groups, which will start at 1130. So make sure you join in and join in some fellowship and reflection on the message that we heard today. As we finish this celebration, I pray that the God of all peace may bless you, and that you will experience a day of rest in the Lord, and that we will reject all other false resting places that are bulldust holes that will break our axles. 
So I want to leave you with this blessing as we close from the book of Romans. Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of our Holy Spirit. Thank you and have a great Sunday. Let's sing together, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. <laughs>